can we find music and tools for emotional well-being? That's the topic we're going to address today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Today, I have a wonderful, beautiful guest today with a very important message about health and wellness and healing for our souls and our hearts. Her name is Angela De La Pena, and she is with Fellowship Creative. That's a group of creative artists and songwriters from Dallas, passionate about Music Jesus and their local church, and they are here to help people. They're on mission. They just released a brand new album called The Help Project to help those that are in any difficult season that they're going through. Welcome, Angela. I am so thrilled to have you on Flourishment today. Thank you so much, Tina. It's such a pleasure to be with you today. In the second half of our conversation with Angela De La Pena of Fellowship Creative, we're going to dive into some practical things that people can do to apply the tools and music that they're offering to really access the healing power of being in fellowship with Jesus. Angela, give us some examples of how the music from your health project can help people and how the resources that you are providing people can implement some of the steps and tools in those. The songs in the Help Project are really more than anything a conversation starter. It's just kind of opening up this discussion that we all need help and we're all seeking for something more than what it is that we can find, you know, here on earth with material things. Something that's great about this project that's a little bit different than the past projects that we've done is it's not necessarily a worship album, but it is more on the creative side of things. So you're able to share it with friends that might ne necessarily be Christ followers. And um, we joke that it's kind of like a Trojan horse, you know, somebody that might not necessarily listen to worship music could listen to an album like this. And it has a positive message and it points them to what we believe is our answer to the help that we need. And that's Jesus. So that's first and foremost, I think one of the coolest, you know, ways it can help other people and really just start the conversation. I think some of us at times can even look at others and maybe judge in a way and not think that you would need that as well. But it's just the conversation starter that we all need Jesus. And we're in this sinful world and we all need his help. So music as a conversation starter, also as a way for people to put words, I think, to the things that they're experiencing when they don't have their own words. Yes. And music reaches us at a different level in our conscious, unconscious mindset where people might block out a nonfiction sermon, a nonfiction message. They'll listen to a song and they'll receive the message before they'll receive the sermon. So that's another thing that music can do and story uh, fiction will be able to do that those nonfiction books might not be able to reach the same people, wouldn't you say? Right, definitely so. Are you a songwriter and a, a prose writer? Or tell us a little bit about you and what your role is with Fellowship Creative. Yes, so I'm part of the team that, you know, I first and foremost lead worship um, each and every week here at Fellowship Church. Uh, that's our main focus to grow the local church. Um, and then I also write songs with Fellowship Creative. That's a big part of my part in the team as well. And just really growing, you know, the team, growing, you know, the next generation. We try to include all kinds of people in the process and try to even include our youth. It's cool with this project. A lot of what you see, even, you know, in the help project book are doodles that uh, students came in and just drew and, and things like that. So we just try to implement that as much as, as we could. I want to talk a little bit about the healing power of creative work. I think that it's great that you're including opportunities for the people that use the book to doodle and do things like that and to be participating in creative work, singing along with the music. Creativity connects us with the creator 
and the recreator and his healing power, that life source that we have. I think we've lost some of that in the modern church. And I love the way that you're reconnecting us to the power of creative work. Yes, I love the way you phrased that. I mean, we are created in God's image and he is the ultimate creator. So we are all creative beings. And I do believe that when we're creating, we are able to connect with God because that's a an attribute, a personality of his that he's instilled in us. So what greater way to, you know, take part of how he created us to be than when we're creating, just like he did, how he created us, he created the earth and the heavens. And... Can you give some examples of some things, some tools, some ideas, some work that you've done with the students that are in your church there in Dallas that they have responded to and found great healing and, you know, express testimonies of coming back from places of crisis to find hope. Can you talk about maybe some, some good hope that we can see that we can pay forward into our own churches? I think something that's great about this generation is that they're very open and honest, especially when, when prompted to do so, when encouraged, we did something a kind of close to the time of this project where we just went around and asked people what they were struggling with, what they needed help with. And they were very honest and very open. And we had some people do that. We also had people write things down. We host um, a camp every year called PK VK um, at the, <laughs> during the summer at one of our camp and retreat centers called the Lasso Ranch. And we host PKs from all around the country and even some from different countries. And they come and are able to reconnect with each other and are able to hear great words and encouraging messages. And one of the things we had their parents do as they were dropped off is what is something that your child is dealing with that they need help with? And so they wrote some things down as well. And some of the things that were written down, I mean, our hearts really, really broke for them. And and these kids, we're talking about pastors, kids. These are kids that grow up in the church. They're there each, each and every day, you know, going to uh, children's school, going to youth group, going to every event you can think of. They're hearing about Jesus every day and they're still dealing with these things too. And so we, anything from, I need help, I, I would like to eat again, to I don't want to live anymore. I don't like myself. What do I do? You know, and, and everything in between. We've we read and heard so many different testimonies and we, we all just need help. And so that was something that was really great and that sparked conversation with some of these kids. And they were able to open up with leaders that were placed around them and they were able to be honest about how they were feeling. And we actually had counselors there at the camp ready to receive them and ready to help them process through what they were dealing with. And so that's something that might sound silly, just asking somebody, you know, what is it? What is it that you're struggling with? But that is a great handle and a great thing that any of us can do. It's easy, I think, you know, as we go about our days and we see people and we ask, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Is your knee-jerk reaction? But asking someone, how are you really? How are you really doing and stopping and taking the time to really get on someone's level like that, I think is a very easy thing that we can all do if we make the time and intentionality for it. I think that's a great point. You're encouraging honesty and creating safe spaces where people can be vulnerable and open and honest and really asking those deep, open-ended questions that can end with fine or yes, or no, but really that deep, how can I deeply pray for your needs right now? How can I hear your heart? If your heart could tell me something that it needs, what would that be? Give them a really new question besides how you doing and right. really get in there and get deep. And then also encouraging them to be open and honest and have those counselors on hand that you need at your local churches. If you invite counselors to events where you've created the safe spaces for people to discuss, that can really be an, a very helpful tool. And do you have other techniques that you're providing for younger generations of people and for the whole church to participate in with the book and you're encouraging youth ministry leaders and student leaders and college career age, I guess is what they say, <laughs> that that age group is after after high school, but early in adulthood, that age group, what are some things that 
you're recommending that people do besides the open safe spaces and bringing in counseling? Coming to church is a great one. Coming and opening up with your pastors and your leaders. I'm so thankful for where I am in, you know, in my church that I know that I have pastors that are there for me, that care for me, that know me. And that comes with being planted in the local church. So if you're there and you, you, you don't have that space where you've, laid down your roots and where you have a church family, I would say that that might be step number one for you is getting connected with a great local church. You'll find people that really care about you and want to help you and will help guide you in this journey for help. And when you go to the local church, you're saying get planted. So I think that's a key thing. I want to highlight that really quick because people who are struggling emotionally might go and sit in the pew and leave. And they're not really going to get the same kind of experience as if they root themselves, plant themselves and say, I'm interested in learning. I know it's hard when you're struggling emotionally to reach out, but how can I engage here and meet people? And how can I be a greeter, help with the coffee, reach out yeah. to people who are in need of the food service ministries where they're providing food for kids to take home in their backpacks and they're packing those backpacks or just, it can be something simple. You don't have to be there to provide counseling for people, but just being in fellowship with people who are serving and being there to connect with others, whether it's in Bible study, in a prayer group or meeting and greeting. And I think we need to really look for those people who are coming and sitting in the pew and trying to get out the door and reaching out to them and asking those questions so they feel comfortable seeking ways to get planted. How do you feel about that? Exactly. Um, no, that's a big thing that we're always encouraging our team. Um, you know, I think a common I don't want to say problem, but a common occurrence um, among sometimes uh, even worship teams or maybe volunteer teams is that, you know, you may play a worship set, you might lead people in worship and then sit backstage and you're kind of in a cave all day until you're ready to go back out there. And that's something that we um, very much disagree with. We love going out into our lobby and meeting people and greeting people as they come in. And there's something to going up to someone and asking them how they are, especially if it is that person who's trying to kind of shrink back and go unnoticed. Maybe they don't want to address their pain. And it just takes somebody with, you know, a smile and asking them how they're doing to might maybe disarm them. And so we always try and go out there and look for people who maybe they don't, you know, know where they're going. They look like they're looking around, they're lost or something. Maybe it's their first time there, or maybe they look like they're avoiding <laughs> a conversation with others. But just finding the people going out, I think it's our responsibility, you know, to help people as we have been helped. I think that's a great thing that churches can do to really be the body of Christ and be the hands and feet of Jesus out into the world that comes in just to visit they can be trained. You can do training with the people that are seasoned members, people that are on staff, but not just staff. I think it needs to be members too. How yes. to be friendly, how to be welcoming, how to find the people who look like they need a hug to just mm -hmm. walk up to them and not necessarily reach out and grab them or anything Oh, super intimidating, <laughs> but, but share love in the way that you smile at them, that you are seen, you are loved, and you matter. Make sure you mm -hmm. communicate that to each person that comes through the door. I think that's something we're missing. And that social issue, that, that peace that was disrupted and development for a lot of people in the younger generation over that years of shutdown, they're going to yeah. especially need some nurturing and cultivating of that. Definitely. So how could people get in touch with your music, which is also a great conversation starter for people that are coming in and out of our lives and the other tools and resources that you have online available to help train ministers, youth ministers, and people who are laypersons wanting to help people who need healing? 
Well, if you'd like to find us and listen to our music, we're on all streaming platforms as Fellowship Creative. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, all of those. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us, we're on as also Fellowship Creative on all of our social media platforms, or you could go to fellowshipcreative.com. If you'd like any of these help resources, you can head to thehelpproject.com, and you can find the Help Project book there, recommendations for counseling, messages, sermon outlines, and more. So if you'd like to be a part of that or you need someone, you need help or you know someone that needs help, uh, you can go ahead and visit thehelpproject.com. Thank you so much, Angela. I hope that all of you listening were inspired to be the light of Christ for people who are experiencing darkness and struggle in their lives. And of course, I hope that you will also hit subscribe and come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment.